Okay, so welcome to the session on evolution and here we are going to discuss about the adaptive radiation and convergent evolution uh, along with pre-adaptation. Okay, so what does adaptation actually? Before we go into discussing adaptive radiation, we can see what is adaptation. Uh, adaptation, it is uh, the occurrence of genetic changes in a population or species as a result of natural selection so that it can adapt to new or altered environmental conditions. So any characteristic that is advantageous to a particular organism or population uh, making it suitable or adapted to the uh, surroundings. It is known as adaptation. Okay. Um, adaptive radiation, uh, on the other hand, it was a term coined by H.F. Osborne in 1902 for explaining evolution of a number of descendants from a single ancestor with a uh, descendants with a great variety of adaptations to uh, different issues. Okay, so here you can see, um, sorry, descendants is spelling mistake. Uh, um, adaptive radiation refer to evolution of a number of descendants uh, from a common ancestor. So what are what is spe so specific about those descendants? Those descendants have a great variety of adaptations, morphological or behavior to different issues. Okay, one example is that of the most uh, studied example is that of the adaptive radiation found in um, uh, what you call uh, Darwin's finches. Okay, if, uh, this uh, particular phenomenon of adaptive radiation is the diversification of a dominant evolutionary group into a large number of subsidiary types adapted to more restrictive modes of life uh, within the range of the larger group. So um, here we can see one example is that of Darwin's finches. It's a classical example of speciation. It involves interplay of uh, like uh, isolation, competition, adaptation, etc., leading to adaptive radi radiation at the species level. It is uh, uh, the Darwin's finches. It is a, a typical example. These birds belong to largest family of the birds uh, and live uh, like uh, fringillidae and live in. Um, Galapagos Islands in the Pacific Ocean. Um, the Galapagos Islands lie on the equator about 600 uh, miles west of uh, South America, specifically Ecuador. And in the archipelago, there are five large islands in the group with 19 smaller ones and 47 rocky. These islands are of volcanic origin and they were never connected with the mainland of South America. The rugged shoreline cliffs are of gray lava and uh, coastal lowlands are patch covered with cacti and thorn, thorny bushes and in the humid uplands trees flourish in rich black soil so this is about the uh, geographical uh, characteristic features of uh, galapagos islands uh, with regard to the assemblage of darwin's finches found over there we can see that the different species of darwin's finches uh, descended from a small sparrow like bird that once inhabited the mainland of uh, South America. The ancestors of Darwin's uh, finches were early migrants to the Galapagos Islands and probably the first land birds to reach the islands. And these early colonists have given rise to 14 distinct species, each well adapted to specific niche. 13 of these species occur in the Galapagos. One is found in the small isolated Caucasus island northeast of Galapagos. And not all 13 species are found on uh, each island. These 14 species belong to four genera. You have, you can see here, uh, Camerinchus, uh, Cetheria, Phenaroloxias, Geospiza. Okay, so these are the uh, four different uh, genera. Uh, in which all the 14 species can be divided into. The most conspicuous difference among the species are the sizes and the shape of the beak, and which are correlated with the marked differences in their feeding habits. Six of the species are ground finches with heavy beaks specialized for crushing uh, the seeds. Okay, you can see here ground finches over here. Okay, so all these you can see very typical, uh, very uh, broad and stout, uh, very large. Uh, what you call beaks okay uh, and it is uh, uh, adapted for crushing seeds some of the ground finches live mainly on a diet of seeds found on the ground for example uh, the three seed eater ground finches that is a small beaked uh, geospiza 
here you can see the small ground finch okay geospiza filigineiform then we have medium beaked geospiza fortis then large beaked geospiza magni rostris so these three ground dwelling or seed eater ground finches occur together in the coastal lowlands of several islands and each species is specialized in feeding on a seed of a certain size depending upon the obviously the beak size um the small uh, beaked finch here feeds on uh, small grass seeds while large size, large beaked finch sorry eats large um, hard fruits and other ground finches feed primarily on the flowers of prickly pear cacti the cactus eaters possess decurved flower probing beaks you can see here okay cactus finch here over here okay so these cactus finches they have a, a, a very peculiar what you call uh, the beaks they um, having flower probing decurved beaks and their beaks are thicker than those of typical flower eating birds okay so that is about the uh, ground finches and the cacti cactus finches all other species are tree finches and the majority of this uh, feed on insects in the moist forest so one of the most remarkable of these tree de dwellers it is the uh, woodpecker finch uh, you can see that in the case of uh, uh, what do you call the uh, here you can see woodpecker finch uh, in the case of woodpecker finch they possess a stout straight beak but lacks a long tongue characteristic of the woodpecker like a woodpecker it bows into wood in search of insect larvae but then it uses a cactus spine or twig to probe out its insect prey to to take out its insect prey from the um, like um, excavated crevice or the, uh, the uh, what you call cut open or we can say excavated uh, part of the bark uh, equally extraordinary is the wabbler uh, finch in the case of the uh, wabbler finch it res resembles in form and habit of the true wabbler its slender wabbler like beak is adapted for picking small insects off the bushes occasionally like a wabbler it can capture an insect in flight you can see here very uh, slender uh, beak uh, of the ceridia olivacea thus the original ancestral stock of finches on the galapagos diverged along several different paths and the pattern of divergence is reflected in the scheme of classification of these birds all the finches are related to one another but the various species of ground finches evidently are more related by descent to one another than to the members of the tree finch assemblage as a measure of evolutionary affinities the ground finches are grouped together in one genus here you can see all the ground finches it is put in the same genus geospiza and the tree finches are clustered in another genus camarinchus the different lineages of finches have been uh, like uh, shown in this particular figure here you can see isn't it the these three the, the, i hope it is clear to you isn't it so camarinchus here you can see these two uh, and this particular species while we can see over here right the whole stretch okay and over here all these are geospiza okay so uh, darwin's finches uh, like adaptive radiations within uh, ecological islands of any sort are called eco insular radiations and darwin's uh, finches provide uh, evidence for the origin of species by means of geographical isolation but here we are going to uh, stress on adaptive radiation another example is that of the mammals adaptive radiation of mammals if we take out this particular group we can see that all these are placental mammals isn't it so we can even say adaptive radiation of placental mammals here okay if you remove this one because it is a marsupial isn't it kangaroos it, they are marsupials so if you are uh, uh, like uh, giving more stress on the placental mammals only in this particular figure we can see they say that the placental mammals or the eutherian mammals provide another example classical example for the process of adaptive radiation uh, here um, uh, from a primitive insectivorous or you can see ancestral primitive insectivorous uh, species okay they are short legged insect eating rat like terrestrial creature that walked with the soles of its feet flat on the ground they evolved to all the present day types of 
mammals. Thus, in respect to limb structure among eutherian mammals, that is the placental mammals, adaptive radiation occurred in the following five different uh, lines. We can even classify into five groups. Okay, one is arboreal. Okay, arboreal in the sense you can see uh, one which is uh, uh, like uh, adapted to live on the trees. Okay, uh, like squirrels. Okay, arboreal. Here you can see the sloths, the flying squirrels. Or, or, or these are actually uh, get adapted for their arboreal life. Okay, uh, the legs are adapted for climbing, and they are known as the scansorial type. Okay, now the second group is the aerial type. Okay, the flying ones, aerial or the volant, and uh, this leads to uh, this. Uh, this represents the mammals adapted for flight. Example, we have the bats. And somewhere along this line, we can also place the gliding mammals such as flying squirrels. Flying squirrels. So you can see, even though it is arboreal, we can even uh, like uh, place this flying squirrel at the like border uh, in the this particular group, okay, volant group. So the arboreal and the aerial forms not not arose independently from the terrestrial forms, but perhaps through semi-arboreal or climbing character ancestor. Okay. Now the uh, third group is just the cursorial. Cursorial, uh, uh, you can see uh, forms such as horses, uh, then we have uh, antelopes. They have developed uh, limbs suitable for rapid movement. You can see the running ones, right? The cursorial mammals have the following three types of adaptations in their, uh, with respect to their food postures. First is plantigrade. Plantigrade in the sense walking with, uh, yeah, a uh, whole sole of the foot touching the ground, okay? Uh, example human beings including the human beings okay we when we walk the whole sole of the foot is placed or touches the ground isn't it such a um, uh, foot foot posture is known as plantigrade second is digitigrade where only the digits that is the toes or the fingers touch the ground and are provided with pads on their ventral side which absorb the shock and help in making stealthy approach towards the prey very fast movement okay uh, for example, lion, tiger, leopard, cat, wolf, uh, dog, etc. Okay, they are known as digitigrade. The third group is like unguligrades. Okay, so here uh, animals walk and run on the tip of their fingers. Okay, so in digitigrade, digits touch the ground, while in unguligrade, only the tips of their fingers and toes uh, touch the ground. Okay, uh, and uh, the, these fingers and uh, toes are shielded by hoops. Okay, and it includes obviously all the archaeodactyls and perissodactyls, okay, like horses, asses, uh, cattle, sheep, buffalo, zebras, etc. So, th those are the cursorial. So, you can see the running ones, okay, herbivores as well as carnivores comes under cursorial group, okay. Now, the fourth one is the fossorial or burrowing, and uh, here uh, include, it includes the moles, they have modified their forelimbs for digging, but they are po poorly adapted for locomotion on the ground. Uh, then we have is the aquatic. Okay, here you can see the swimming ones. Okay, um, the aquatic mammals, whales and porpoises, having limbs strongly adapted for aquatic life, but they cannot move uh, move about freely on land. Obviously, um, they cannot move on land actually. While seals, here you have an example: seals, seals, sea lions. Walruses, they have strongly modified limbs for aquatic life, but they are also able to move about on land with that. So, that is a kind of um, uh, like uh, adaptation for uh, like aquatic life. Okay, so we, so we saw the arboreal type, volant type, right? Then we had the cursorial type, fossorial type, and then the aquatic life. Okay. The last one we can say like uh, modified for walking, uh, right? Uh, they are known as ambulatory and thus that are uh, uh, then adapted for jumping. Uh, we call it as a saltatory. So all these are the different uh, what you call um, mode of life or mode of locomotion to which the uh, different kinds of mammals have got adapted to. But all these animals have evolved from the same ancestor. So it is from the same ancestor for the sake of adapting to the conditions where they live, these animals, these mammals have developed the adaptations, morphological features. Okay. So, uh, we had the almost like uh, uh, seven different categories of uh, groups which have arose from the same 
and system okay so this is about the adaptive radiation fine 